Sometimes disaster strikes when you're in your studio, doesn't it? Well, here's mine for the day. Come on in. I wanted to try a couple of different stamps. One is this uh, rubber stampede stamp, and it is um, A1464F called Stained Glass Poinsettia. These are readily available on eBay. I just got this one. I did take it off and mount it up onto some easy foam because with this textured paper it's a challenge to get a good enough impression with uh, a single stamp. And so I've got the Misty set up and I'm going to stamp it onto a separate piece of that um, watercolor paper so that I don't ruin this one. And then I'll do a little trim on it. Now I am going to use uh, Memento Tuxedo Black and that's probably a mistake but that's what I'm using and I thought uh, if I let it dry well then possibly it wouldn't bleed too much on me I didn't notice a lot of bleeding on the birds now there was a little bit I did see some but I feel positive that uh, I'm gonna be glad I mounted this up on the misty so that I can get three or four impressions of this. I know you can emboss this and then have it be kind of um, where it contains the colors, but my goal today really is practice, and so I don't want to have the um, embossing powder hold my paint for me. I want to, to develop that skill. And I think that's just something that we kind of have to do when we're learning something new, isn't it? Get my little pusher guy here. See how we can do this. Well, that's three. I believe maybe one more will do it. And I'm going to leave this stamp on the misty because I probably will want to do a final stamp over with some VersaFine Onyx Black so that it has a nice crisp edge on it when, when I get finished. So let me put a little X on the corner down here. Put my speedball bearing away and get my ink covered up and pull this piece of paper out of the misty now. I've got some inks um, that I pulled that just kind of will will do what we need to do. I've got a couple blues, a couple reds, a yellow, and a couple greens. So I think I'll start with the yellow this time and I've got a little water spritz here and I'm going to do these little stamens on the inside in a fine brush and I think I'll start with the one round, the number one round orient my uh, paper the way the stamp is. Let me know in the comments if you do watercolor, if you have any hints <laughs> for a beginner, um, because I think there's lots of beginners out there. It's kind of an intimidating thing. Um, to watch on YouTube. I watch a lot of it and I think, oh, I just don't know if I can do that. But I just decided I was going to try it. I enjoy doing um, my inks this way sometimes because they don't bleed through as badly uh, it, with this method as they do with the alcohol uh, pens. 
and so if you're working on a single layer something something then um, this little skill is, is a good one to have I think I just finished a little card today which we'll work on on Thursday with our scrap series um, and um, I was glad to be able to use my ink and brush that way but it was just on regular paper it wasn't on the watercolor paper there I think that's enough of the yellow and I think we may be switched to red and I've got a little red left from what I was working on yesterday let me rinse my brush I've got my little water bucket over here that uh, my little stencil bucket and I'm just going to use that for rinsing these brushes let's see I believe I'll do I want to try the number four round and see on that one I don't want to get it too awful wet because it it's not as controllable We've been having an absolutely stunning day today. See, now there's a little bleed on that black. I, I just don't, I'm not worried too much about that. But it's fall here and it's just gorgeous weather. It was, we had three really hard frosts this last week. And now it's up in the mid 70s, so. I hope you'll try a little watercolor um, process in your studio. It's just very fun to do, and the stamps, if you pick a stamp that's a good color coloring stamp that has some broad uh, areas to color on it, I think that's a good spot, good place to start. At any rate, it is for me. If you don't get your brush super, super wet, looks like we're going to do all right with this, maybe. I've got another. This is real red. I've got some cherry cobbler there that I thought I would go uh, back in to accent just a little bit with after I get this first layer of color down. Now I think if I recall on the poinsettia, the red part's actually leaf material. It is not um, petals. I think those little yellow things in the middle are the actual flower part of it. I could be wrong, but I believe that's right. Y'all know. <laughs> I don't remember for sure, but I think that's correct. I have some stained glass windows that were my in my great aunt Julia's house. I was named for my great aunt Julia. And um Anytime I see stained glass like this, I'm reminded of those windows there. I've moved them, I don't know how many times. They're packed up in some <clears throat> very secure packing, waiting to be repaired, and they've been that way for, I know, at least 40 years. It's crazy. But I did go on YouTube the other day and um, start investigating how to do stained glass. But I just needed to do a little repair on them. I don't need to learn how to do stained glass. 
but at some point I do need to fix those. I want I wanted to hang them in the uh, on the porch a little bit. I think we have some west-facing windows on the porch, and I thought they would be really pretty over there. There, now I think I need just a little bit more ink. And I'm just going to get some harvested up that way. Give myself a little bit more water. And do just a little accents in here, I think. I was looking at the trees um, today. We have a lot of oak and hickory. We don't have maples in this area, so we don't have the really brilliant, gorgeous fall color, but we do have some really pretty golds uh, from the hickory trees. But I've been looking at them and noticing how the colors are changing um, on those. And if you take a little time and look at nature, coloring everything the same, all ubiquitous, it's just nature doesn't do it that way. So I think just dabbing it in there uh, works just fine. There. I'm going to put just a little bit of this... Um, cherry cobbler in there I think just for a little extra coloration it's a lot brighter than you think it would be real red I always think about being the uh, top dog on the red scale but cherry cobbler's got some good color in it doesn't it never had any painting lessons in my lifetime. I would probably be better if I had, but I just like to dabble. And I like to encourage people to just have a play in your studio once in a while. And it's okay if it doesn't work out. We we'll just have to accept that and move on. I'm going to rinse my red out of my brush and switch off to the green. Got my old faithful here. <laughs> old Olive. When I was a kid, my mom and dad were divorced, but when I was a kid, in the, I was in the fourth grade, my mother married a man named Joe, and his first wife's name was Olive, so I always think about Olive, uh, and when I hear old Olive, because he was older than my mom. Let's just see what we got going here now. My mother took some art classes and she complained viciously about having to follow the lines, draw, stay in the lines, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I've got lines to stay in. <laughs> ah, if I didn't, it, it just would just be a blob on the page, I can flat guarantee you that. Just flat guarantee it. Let's see, where else do we need a little green? I 
I believe I'm going to put just a little bit down coming up into some of these. You know how the poinsettias do. They kind of start out green and then they go to red, don't they? There. I think that's enough of the green. And now I got a couple of blues. I said I had a couple of blues. I've got one blue and I'm going to get another one, I think. This is Marina Mist, and that's the same color as the um, snowflakes are on that uh, stencil. And I've got some Pacific Point over here. Let me get it. I suppose I missed my mic there. I've got some Pacific Point, and I think we'll try a little bit of that as well. Let me see this. This brush is too big. And you know, stained glass, the older stained glass is not consistent usually in the colors. It kind of comes and goes. And if the light's hitting it, it's definitely not consistent in color. So it's okay if this little bit, this kind of wet and dry areas, dry different colors, fine. switch off to uh, this number one brush and I'm going to get a little bit of Pacific Point and try to do this inside here in the Pacific Point I wonder what you all are doing today. Hopefully you watch from watching my video. <laughs> I think on Thursday we're going to do some bag tags. I've got a little uh, plan going on for that, so I'll be working up the uh, examples probably tomorrow or the next day. Let's see, I think I better leave that alone. Let's just leave it alone. And now, I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. And uh, go on to the other one. And this one, well, since we had so much success with that, let's try dropping this on. first. Sorry. I need to get this finished up first. I only have one Misty. I know a lot of people have more than one, but I just have the one. Okay, now you'll notice I put that little X in the corner there so that I can re-ink this stamp now. And I'm going to put uh, Versifying on it this time and try to really get the black to come back. And then we'll hope it goes in the right spot. <laughs> that would be aggravating, wouldn't it? Well, if it happens, we'll just move on to the second card. That's okay. And it didn't. It didn't go in the right spot, did it? Well, fiddle dee dee. Well, that happens. It's going in the trash. 
and I'll clean this stamp later and we'll keep moving on. Well, I went back upstairs after a break and checked my card again and I thought it was worth salvaging. So here's the final card. Let me know what you think in the comments and have a great day, y'all. Talk to you soon.